right. I, in my head, there's a lot more notes about mutual uh, mutual circular. So we talk about we got 6,000 acres of organic farmland, but really it is just not enough mm. to grow everything we need mm. in the supply chain. And in reality, there's a lot of plant where it got to grow in a certain climate and certain conditions. So for anything that we cannot grow on our own farms, we rely on our partner growers. And there's well over 100 partner growers throughout the world, which I brag earlier, over 27 countries. And some of those partner growers belong to a cooperative. So through those cooperatives, you even have further reach into their farming community. So Neutral Start really is our Amway proprietary program when it comes to agricultural certification. So for every farm that provides a, a, a botanical that uses in our product, we'll have to go through the Neutral Start process, the certifying process, so that we ensure that they meet the same quality standard that we use on our farm, so that we ensure that what we get from them it comes with purity, it comes with quality, and it's traceable. Right, Becky, anything to add to that? No. Great. So this is really an example when you talk about industry practice. Neutralized, neutral serve practice really go above and beyond industry standard when it comes to going outside to uh, source your ingredients. Um, just what I explained, all the different things we look at to certify them to be part of our supply chain. And through our farm and through neutral serve, we can boldly and confidently say again that we have a control from seed to supplement every step of our process. Okay, so now finally, let's take a look at what we're doing on our farm. So it all begins with healthy soil. I would say soil is probably the most important aspect of farming. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just maintaining them, but improving them will really assure that you get the high quality plant um, from the soil. Healthy, healthy soil not only helps with crop yields, it only also makes sure that it reduces pest pressure um, and really just long term make sure we have that sustainability on these farms. Here, uh, some of the practices we do, we, we do soil testing, we do soil amendments with natural compost, and fertilizers. One in the picture you will see a lot of earthworms in the earth. Uh, one of the things that we do, and I saw it down in Mexico, they literally raise earthworms. So they have this greenhouse dedicated to bathtubs, bathtubs of earthworms in the soil. And from that, all those bathtubs, they will um, we collect what we call the hummus liquid. And that is nature's microbial fertilizer. That's the most nutrition thing you can put in your soil. So, um, you know, opposite to conventional farms where they can use chemical, they can use synthetic material to control their weed. We use uh, crop rotation and cover crops um, to make sure that we minimize soil erosion and increase the soil fer fertility. So just uh, if you're interested to know, so crop rotation, what I kind of find out too, is a practice of planting different types of plants in the same area in a sequence season so that the soil is not just used to one set of nutrients, right? So it's very well designed science in how we rotate a crop. Cover crops, uh, we plant them not because our supply chain needs it. We plant them on our fallow land so that through cover crops, we can control uh, soil erosion, we can control, make sure the nitrogen level in the soil is healthy and continue to thrive. And for those of you who know science, you know nitrogen in the plant is a key compound that works with sunlight in the process of photosynthesis. And when we do cover crops too, we make sure that the roots are compact enough so our soil doesn't run off because runoffs are the quickest way to lose nitrogen. So again, these are investments we make in a natural way versus dumping chemicals on our soil. So after soil is healthy, we do field preparation. This is another critical step to make sure we have a productive season. 
Um, again, we got to meticulously prepare our bed to make sure that it just has the right moisture content and it also has the right height to create that hill. And moisture control is very important because if it's too wet, it gets too clumpy. If it's too dry, it gets too dusty. So when it comes to planting, it's just not ideal. Um, again, once the bed is prepared, we use our GPS guidance technology to do the marking out, which is the middle picture. And with this GPS technology, we make sure not only to roll the stray, but we also maximize our acreage to make sure that we get the best yield per acre. When did that come in? Very, very similar. Tracking. Uh, it went back, um, I think, mostly, I think Trial Lake Farm is one site that I used the most, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But it went back at least five or six years, if not longer. And it's an investment that all our farms are looking at also GPS and maximization technology. No patent on that. Pardon me? No patent on that. Uh, I would say no. So some other things to point out on our uh, sustainable farming. So kind of go back to what you were asking. We use GPS just about almost all the process, especially in trolley farm, where the labor wage is higher. <coughs> the competition for the labor is more fierce. So almost every process at trolley farm, we use GPS. We use it for planting, weeding, cultivating, and harvesting. So the GPS really to, it's really to make sure that as we go through this process, we can sustainably, repeatedly to achieve that accuracy. And when it comes to do the different processes, and as a result, it increases our yield, uh, reduce our labor costs, it reduces weeding costs, all of which makes us more competitive. So just a little, little example, what I was told by uh, Darwin, one of our managers, uh, as I was learning the GPS, if you were to use a hand steer tractor to do these marking outs, you probably average get about four inches. With our GPS technology, you can narrow down to three inches Wow! without compromising plant mortality. So right off the bat, when you go weeding this area, it's 25% less surface area to weed. So there is your cost reduction on weeding. Wow. And I say last not least, we, I really wanted to put ladybug on there, but our famous ladybug, the use of the hawks or owls, or those are still uh, fun and useful tools that we do out there to make sure we deter pests and predators naturally. All right, so now it's time to get the good stuff out the earth. Um, again, I would say harvesting, even though it's the last step uh, before leaving the farm, much research is gone into this to make sure that we harvest at a peak time, to make sure that the nutrition value is at its highest. Um, so whether it's day or night throughout the growing season, records are kept meticulously so we know when exactly we go in to execute on the harvest timing. I would say most of our crops are harvest, uh, harvested mechanically with the exception maybe broccoli or cactus, where you want to make sure you harvest the right part of the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, even our acerola tree is a mechanic who's shaking uh, our cherries off the tree. <coughs> um, and it really, when you harvest, you got to make sure you harvest at the right height, uh, right? If it's too close to the ground, you take a dirt and soil. There's, so there's a lot of science and technology into that. But if you don't cut deep in, enough into the plant, you don't get that valuable uh, nutrient from the best part of the plant. So, um, so harvest for us is a science. It, it, it's uh, something that we study, timing and a method. So once they're harvested, they're moved to our on-site drying facility. Um, and if it's a root crop, it goes through washer first, then gets dry. There will be one or two crops like rosemary from Mexico. We do a field dry because studies gone beyond it to say that field drying is the best way to preserve the phytonutrients. Mm -hmm. This is another example of our acerola cherry, where you see two pictures showing um, different, uh, different, different level of nutrients depending on where they're harvested. So contrary to what you think, uh, on the left side, when acerola cherry are still immature, when they're still green and not ripe, 
that's the best time. When you harvest during this time, you get almost 150 phytonutrients. Wow. And the vitamin C is at its highest peak. What I'm told is probably greater than oranges. Mm -hmm. uh, when you miss that timing and it goes into red and ripe, not only you get fewer uh, phytonutrients, less in quantity. Mm -hmm. So how do we know? Extensive research, mm -hmm. right? Extensive research. And also a fun fact um, in terms, you know, where I feel like we're the world-renowned expert when it comes to acerola cherry. Fun fact for you, our acerola research have worked almost, let's say, make sure I get my number right, more than 80 varieties of acerola cherry at this farm. That's how extensive our research. 80 variety almost equate to 95% of the known variety in the world. And that's how that's healthy we went. Wow. So once harvested and dried, uh, material is sent to our extraction facility in Quincy, Washington. This facility is truly really the state of the art. It was opened back in 2015. Okay. Uh, replacing our Lakeview facility. So those of you here still re remember Lakeview. So this is a new Lakeview. This is our Quincy facility. So all of the plants, right plants from trolley farms in Mexico, they come here. Um, they get extracted, they get concentrated, and then they get dried. So they become extra powder that we can send to our Buena Park here for tabooing or granulation. Brazil has a, their, their own white palace uh, where they do extraction and drying there. It's specifically designed to handle acerola cherries. So really in summary, I think I'll just leave four bullets with you. Hopefully that echoes uh, in your head, uh, even I leave the podium here. Uh, so neutralized farming, I would say really, again, focus on these areas. We are dedicated to organic farming. We are committed to sustainability of our earth using natural resources. Um, we're all about health, starting with a healthy seed, healthy soil, to ensure that we have a healthy crop ultimately deliver high quality, healthy products to the Neutralite brand. Thirdly, our com commitment to continuous innovation through development and research. We have a scientist coming up shortly to talk more about that. And last not least, it's great that we do great things on our farm, but we don't overlook our community and the power that we have to influence generations to come in their own environment and in terms of uh, you know, uh, ecological sustainability. So commitment to empowering our community is huge as well. <clears throat> so we're going back on these messages that you heard when you first begin. Hopefully these messages are more meaningful to you now mm -hmm. and that when next time you talk about our Neutralite product, you talk about Neutralite story, farm story, you're more confident. Um, uh, I may be biased, but I would say Neutralite brand really, truly is the one that can be trusted, uh, having worked with extensively a lot of ingredient suppliers out there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have for you today. I thank